So GTK has a very, very long history, and even though I don't use, say, GNOME, and I don't use any desktop environment that is built around GTK, I just use a window manager, because a lot of the graphical applications I use end up being built with GTK, any changes to it are kind of important to me. So very recently, we took the next step along the GTK history because GTK 4 has been officially released. It's been in development for about four years, and it's finally hit the point where it's stable enough to call a released product. We have this blog post here from the GTK development blog by McClasson, so I'm not going to read through most of this. The reason why I want to mention this though is because they have this section here where they talk about some of the interesting new features that are going to be added. And the reason why I want to show them like this is because there's not really any actual applications to test these features out with because it was released about five days ago. So let's actually have a look at some of the features they think are kind of interesting. So one of them is media playback. So if we go on full screen this, Basically, you're going to be able to embed videos inside of a GTK application. I can think of some uses for this. Maybe if you want to have, say, like a video tutorial for how to use the app, or maybe you want to have some video elements alongside, say, like a checkbox list, or maybe you want to have, you know, video previews in like a file manager or something. I think all of those kind of could be really interesting use cases to use something like this. Obviously, you could build a media player around this native playback, but we have so many media players already, and if you really want a GTK media player, just go and find one of the GTK front ends for something like mPlayer, and it's going to be better than most people are going to build anyway. Another interesting thing we have is being able to drag and drop elements around inside of a window. Now, I have a use case for this, but I really don't want someone to build it, but I kind of do because it'd be kind of funny as well. So... I don't know if you ever used macOS before, but inside of Finder, at least when I used it, you could actually go and disable the file manager grid. So you could go and place your files basically anywhere on your screen and have them overlapping with each other, and it became a massive mess to actually deal with. So with something like this, you can basically go and build the exact same thing. Do I think you should? No. But it would be kind of funny, and if someone builds it, I will have a look at it on this channel. The example they have here is of just a little game. I think that explains what it does, but it doesn't really explain what it's actually capable of. So the next thing on the other hand, the example they have, you know, you'd never actually go and reasonably do. But what this basically is, is layout managers and transforms. So this might seem weird as a still image. So let's go and play it. Basically, what has happened here is all of these icons have been mapped to this, I guess, sphere, and you can actually go and rotate it around in this space, and as you rotate it around, it will actually go and, you know, adjust the size of everything based on where they should be located in this space. Now, normally, you wouldn't be mapping these icons to a sphere, so... What you would normally have is some sort of traditional 2D layout, and layout managers honestly just make things simpler. It makes it so if you want to have it work nicely on one form factor and another form factor and another form factor, it's much simpler than having to go and manually make it work on all of those devices. Basically, assuming the layout manager actually works properly, it should go and resize stuff according to the actual device size. There will have to be some tweaks because some devices are considerably smaller than others, but the general layout should be basically the same. The next thing is scalable lists and grids. This is probably the least interesting thing on this entire list. Basically, what it is, is you can make grids, you can make lists, you can resize them. That's pretty much what it does. Nothing super interesting, but I can definitely see how that would be used. I don't know why this wasn't mentioned anywhere in this article, but one of the new biggest features of GTK 4, which every single other outlet that's talking about GTK 4 is talking about, is its Vulkan renderer. But this article just doesn't mention it anywhere. So the Vulkan renderer should be a massive, massive improvement in performance for any supported graphics cards. So pretty much anything in like the past three or four years. Obviously, if it's a bit older than that, then you're not really going to get any benefit from it. But for anyone running a relatively new system, it's going to be massive. And it's going to allow developers to do things like this. Now, obviously, this isn't the best example of what you can do, but this is working with shaders. So we have some little bubbles going on in the background here, and we have some interesting transitions going on. Now, the transitions is where I think it can be kind of interesting. Obviously, these ones are kind of boring transitions, but I can definitely see ways in which this could be used. Personally, I'm a big fan of doing fade transitions, so maybe if you say copy and paste a file into a file manager, it could fade into existence, or you delete a file and then it fades out of existence, rather than just suddenly disappearing. 
Along with the Vulkan renderer for Linux, there are some improvements coming to the macOS rendering as well. So what it says here is the new macOS backend supports software-based rendering via Cairo. That is what it was already doing, but it also supports GPU rendering with OpenGL. Now, OpenGL on Big Sur is deprecated, so it could be removed at any point, but it is still better than just doing the software rendering, at least for now. So in the future, hopefully there will be Apple Metal and Vulkan on Molten VK support, but right now at release, this isn't going to be there. So you might be wondering why is better macOS support important? So GTK is intended to be a cross-platform development library. So by making it better on things like Windows and macOS, the developers on those systems are going to be more likely to actually use those libraries to actually develop their applications. And if they use something like GTK, getting it running on Linux is going to be considerably easier than say someone making a Apple library specific application or a Windows library specific application when it's something that's cross-platform like this, it's better for everyone. Even though it's probably not going to make much of a difference because people who use macOS probably want their systems to like fit into the macOS feel. And doing that with GTK requires some pretty heavy theming and isn't something that's going to happen out of the box. This has been in development for four years, so there's plenty of other little things we can talk about, like, say, data transfers, event controllers, render nodes, accessibility improvements, but most of this is fairly boring, so let's instead talk about where we can expect to see GTK 4. So if you're a GNOME user, then GNOME 40 is going to be your best bet, which is going to have a lot of its applications ported over to GTK 4. Now, obviously, there is going to be a lot of stuff that is still running GTK 3, but you will at least be able to test out some of the new stuff. If you are not using that, though, and you wanted to actually just test out some of the functionality, there is two flat packs you can try out as well, and those are GTK 4 Demo and GTK 4-Widget-Factory, which is basically how these examples in the actual blog post were being made. So if you want to go and try out some of the new functionality, that is probably your best bet to go with, because there's not really much to actually try in the way of GTK applications right now. There are some videos about how to build stuff with GTK 4, but because it came out about five days ago, most apps haven't actually started migrating over to it yet. So my expectation, if you're not running GNOME or random GNOME applications, is you're probably gonna have to wait maybe three to six months for a lot of applications to be migrated over. Some of them might even take upwards of a year. But even then, a lot of applications will probably never be migrated from GTK3 because as you probably know, there are still a lot of applications that are still using GTK2. But there is something to mention about GTK2. So with the release of GTK4, GTK2 is no longer going to be supported. As it says here, GTK4 is now stable and we consider it ready for consumption. That does not mean that GTK3 is dead though. So what's going to happen with GTK3 is the same thing that's been happening with GTK2. So it's still been getting updates until GTK4 came out. So GTK3 is going to keep getting updates until GTK5 comes out or whatever it's going to be called when the next version after 4 comes out. So if you still want to keep developing stuff with GTK3, you can do so. But it is recommended that if you're going to start a new project, it should be with GTK4. And there are instructions on how to actually migrate from GTK2 all the way up to GTK4. Basically, for that migration, you would have to migrate first to GTK3 and then migrate to GTK4. Obviously, if you're just coming from 3, it's one less step you have to do. If you want to read through this documentation, it used to be available in this article here at these two links, but decided to actually go and change the links. If you try to go to this now, you get to a 404 not found. So what you need to do is go to the GTK4 reference manual. You can just find it by looking up GTK4 reference manual, whatever search engine you use, and scroll down to part six, which is migrating from previous versions of GTK. So migrate from GTK2 to four and migrate from GTK3 to four. Now, if you happen to miss any of this, I imagine that it's probably going to throw a compiler error once it's actually missing some of these library calls. So if you do happen to miss anything, it's not going to be the end of the world. You just have to go and read through and see exactly what the problem was. Now, obviously, I've only seen demo applications, but from what I've seen, GTK3 and GTK4 look very, very similar. There is a slight difference I have noticed, though, and that is it seems to be more heavily using hamburger menus. So these menus right here, which I think are a really terrible design and should have never been created. 
having a menu bar is always going to be a better idea unless you're on a mobile device. But for some reason, GNOME really likes having these hamburger menus here. And I really hope that with GTK4, these don't start becoming a bit more popular. But it was already an option with GTK3, so it's going to be up to the developers whether they want to keep doing what they've already been doing and having sensibly designed applications like, say, PC Man FM, or if they want to go and migrate to using hamburger menus instead. And if you're one of those people who really like the look and feel of GTK2, this doesn't necessarily mean it has to be the end for you because GTK2 is an open source project. So someone can go and fork the source code and go and keep maintaining and making sure it works on newer hardware. That's really the only thing that's going to be the problem you have to deal with. There is going to be some security problems if you're doing anything that is network attached, but if you're just running it on a local system, that's not really that big of a deal. So there are some people who are managing, you know, forks of GTK. Most of them don't have that much development going on, but this is one of them. So this is STLWRT. This is basically going to maintain the look and feel of GTK2 while having the extra functionality of GTK3. Personally though, I really don't like the look and feel of GTK2, and as long as we don't get hamburger menus everywhere and forced like header bars, I'm going to be perfectly fine with GTK4. So hopefully that doesn't happen, but really only time will tell. So for now, I think we're going to end off the video. So before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. A special thank you to... Chris, Joachim, Donald, Corbinian, Andre, Nathan, David, Montezar, Will, Chico, Bento, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter D, Tony, Tushar, and all my $2 supporters. If you want to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave, pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.